In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Immaculate Queen of all saints, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today the church celebrates St. Martha, Martha the sister of Mary and Lazarus, the family that was so close to Jesus, whom he loved so much. And we hear today in the gospel uh, the episode just preceding Jesus' miracle of uh, resurrecting Lazarus, Lazarus. But the story I think that we associate most with St. Martha is the famous uh, scene in which Jesus comes and her sister Mary chooses the better part and sits at the feet of Jesus and Martha uh, flustered and overworked and anxious about the preparations, complains and uh, and our Lord tells her that Mary had chosen the better part and it wouldn't be taken from her. And so often we catch ourselves in that frame of mind, the Martha mode, I call it, where uh, we're caught up in action and we're totally focused on getting things done and we uh, can easily overlook the, the grace of the moment. Martha then represents, um, I won't focus on the fault of, you know, being overly focused on the action, but the, the, the holiness of that attitude of readiness to serve. And we're called to serve Jesus in our brothers and sisters. Martha's the example. The question, though, that often uh, is more difficult is to recognize who is our brother and sister. Uh, and the answer is very simple. Every other living human being is our brother and sister that we're called to serve from the Pope down to the poorest of the poor. Those who have no roof over their head and those living under the same roof with us which oftentimes is the hardest to recognize as our brother and sister in Christ, or even better as uh, Blessed Mother Teresa of Calcutta would always say, not just my brother or my sister, but Christ in my brother or sister. And she would always uh, see Christ in everyone she met, or at least strive to, even to the point where she could say that to President Bill Clinton. So. It's remarkable that holiness to be able to see Christ in anyone uh, without being totally uh, focused on the superficial aspects of our human weaknesses or the weaknesses in our brothers and sisters. And coming back to the question of those living under the same roof as us, the old saying is often very true that familiarity breeds contempt we easily annoy one another, and seeing the humanity in our brother and sister, we often forget the holiness in them. Martha, a great saint, got annoyed with Mary, another great saint. Uh, and Mary was indeed holy and enlightened enough to choose the better part, but so too was Martha holy. Holiness is the imitation of Christ. At least that's a very handy definition. And both sisters imitated Jesus, each in her own way according to her own uh, temperament and character. Mary recognized the primacy of prayer that was very instinctive for her. And so she was given to contemplation of divine things and sat herself promptly at the feet of the Savior and didn't move. And she was recognized by the Lord for the wisdom of her choice. 
And yet Martha was also like Christ. Jesus said, I come to serve, not to be served. And so Martha certainly imitated Christ in that attitude. And Christ then is the wholeness that we seek. Contemplation and action, prayer and service. And so we all have to strive to find in ourselves whatever our inclination may be toward contemplation or toward action. We have to seek to have that complementary wholeness of both. And so we seek to imitate Mary in contemplation And if we do focus on that, then we can better understand the meaning of Christ's words that whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers, that you do unto me. And that will help us to recognize him in everyone with whom we have contact. And then we seek to imitate Martha in her willingness to serve him and to, to be able to see him as Mary in everyone. And just to bring in the question of vices and virtues, as St. Francis always recommends, uh, in either mode, whether it be in the contemplative mode or in the active mode, we should seek to be on guard against laziness because Uh, Laziness kind of keeps us in one or the other mode, perhaps, um, without achieving that proper balance. Uh, It's easy to get in an active mode and put off the work of prayer. And likewise, one could uh, use prayer as an excuse to avoid service. So we have to find uh, that perfect balance that comes from respecting and and living in both modes at the right time, in the right measure, using our temperament and our vocation and our gifts that the Lord has given us. Let us ask Martha, who perfected herself in this world through service and who now enjoys the fullness of contemplation in eternity, to continue her service to the church by interceding for us there at the feet of our Lord, that we might be able to live in a way that's pleasing to God in contemplation and fruitful for his kingdom in action. Praise be Jesus and Mary.